Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Aries Atelier. My name is Aries, and today I'm going to show you guys a tutorial on how I made this drawstring bag. So I basically merged three different materials. I used Ashoke for the top where I put the eyelets. I used Ankara for the body and the inside, and I finished off with a faux leather. And I used faux leather for the base because I also I want something that you'll be able to wipe off and wouldn't stain so much. So it's kind of seven two purposes. I think one is decorative and the other one is sort of makes sense. You don't want to put Ankara at the bottom where you get to wash it every time. This way you could just wipe it off if there's a stain. So um, I guess the benefit of um, being self-taught is that you get to come up with these like ideas. You weren't taught, you weren't um, told by anyone, you didn't see the tutorial, you just like, I want to make a bag that will be able to do this and that, and you should be able to do it. So um, I really explained the tutorial well, and I hope you guys get the way I did it, because I didn't want to cut the ashoki too many times, I wanted to show whereby it's just going to be the top. And it opens and it's basically the same thing inside so I didn't want to mess that up because if you've seen my first video it was about the 10 African fabrics you should know then you would understand that this thing is actually woven so you want to try to minimize the number of times you cut it and that is also why when I put the holes I had to use eyelets to hold them down because Ashoke is made of silk um, sorry, silk threads so they tend to unravel if you don't handle it carefully so after I cut the holes, I had to do, I had to put eyelets and you could also check out my other video. Wow, I am on fire today. You can check out my other video on how to um, fix eyelets and how to fix them. Um, I think it's called gourmets, a gourmets. I don't know. But yeah, you should check out. I'm going to put the, the link up. So thank you guys so much for watching my other videos. Thank you for subscribing. That's my old subscribers. And if you're seeing this video for the first time, Thank you for stopping by to watch my video and thank you guys for um, the few of you that actually voted on the sew-off I had with my sister in my last two posts. I'm going to put the link also for that. You could watch it and you could give your own opinions. It was basically where we made a bucket hat with um, not enough time and it was, it was this crazy thing. But you should check out the video. And I also did a similar challenge where I challenged her to make a peplum belt and thankfully I performed way better in that one so i was proud of myself <laughs> okay okay so um yeah i think that's pretty much for now all for now oh my god i woke up i woke up really early today so the sleep is not on my system yet but anywho thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you subscribe you could like this video you could comment down below if you have anything you want me to make I like I like the challenge you could um, let me know what you want me to make and um, yeah just enjoy the video today I'm actually combining three fabrics here three materials rather first this is a showcase material and I'm going to mix that with some anchor and some faux leather and um, Okay, first thing you want to do is get your accessories out. I have two D rings. I have same pair of um, bag hooks. I have one adjusters, <clears throat> and I have a dozen eyelets. So these type of eyelets, they have the front and the back, and you need those two pieces to fix one hole. So for the materials here, I'm actually using the outer base for um, the bag i'm using faux leather and it measures 74 by 11 centimeters i have a base and matching foam 23 centimeter the base is a little smaller because it's going to be inside i'm using this to make a bag rope for where i'm going to put the eyelets and it measures 80 centimeter long uh, the ashoke piece is 74 <coughs> And I'm using this as a bias for the inside part of the bag because I want everything to sort of match. These two small pieces, I'm using them for um, where I'm going to put the D rings. And now the main piece itself, which is the anchor, and I cut it to 74 by 44 centimeter. 
it's basically the inner part and the outer part together i wanted it to be one piece i didn't want to separate it so so if i fold it like this <clears throat> let me adjust this so if i fold it like this i'm going to use the fold leather to complete it so it doesn't sew on top it it just sort of continues all the way to the bottom of the bag let me give let me show you guys how i'm gonna do it and just like that so it forms one piece for the whole outer part of the bag so the first thing you want to do is actually attach that piece of full leather to the lower part of the bag so that way you have both the inside and the outside measuring the same length so i'm going to sew this straight so first thing you want to do is you're going to sew the inner part first before you turn it over and you sew the outer part and you try to be as neat as possible because this is going to be one of the first things that people see when they actually look at the bag so you want to try to be as careful as possible with this okay so after you do that you're going to lay down your piece of anchor and make sure it's neat and straight because what you're going to do is attach the ashoki the same way so originally i actually wanted to extend the ashoki but i figured that since that part is going to be carrying a lot of weight so to make more sense to double it so i just sort of sew the ashoki on top of the anchor just for reinforcement you know that because it doesn't really show at the bottom So you're going to just fold the ashoke. The ashoke, I didn't want to put it inside, I wanted to just sew it on top because I wanted the edges to show. So you're going to mark, you're going to fold the ashoke into two and you're going to mark it before you go ahead and pin it. Because what we want to do here is actually join this piece and we want to make sure it's as straight as possible. So now you have it in the middle and you want to sew it down. But first you have to pin it so it doesn't shift when you're sewing. So now you carefully um, pin both sides of the ashoke. So when you fold it into two, you get very straight stitches. So before I do that, I actually just want to fold a small strip of faux leather and this is what we're going to use to attach the D-rings to the bag. And it's important you do this first because when you're sewing the ashoke, you're going to sew it in with the ashoke also. So now you want to take your ashoke carefully and sew to the edge as close as possible. So your stitches are nearly, nearly <laughs> invisible so now I'm actually going to mark 19 centimeter what I basically did is I divided the measurement of the entire length that's 74 into four and I got 18 then I added one centimeter for allowance which gave me 19 and that is where I'm going to attach the d-ring don't worry very soon you're going to see when I unravel everything but I'm just doing it up close so you see where the spot is and how you just sort of tuck 
the strap with the D-ring just under it and you just sew over to give this easy seamless finish so first thing this is the outer part of the bag take notes so when you sew over this your tab is actually going to be facing down before you come back and you sew over so so while you're sewing the ashoke you just attach the d-ring and when you're done you come back and you sort of just tack over it because you want that thing to be facing up not down <clears throat> so just do forward and back stitch it so now we actually want to punch the the holes for the eyelets and there's a formula I use and it works for me every time so the entire length of this is 72 and we want to make 12 holes that is six folds one fold is two holes so to get the first spot you actually divide that by two it gives you three so basically 72 divided by 12 then what you get you divide it again by two because I'm sewing this thing once and the stitching is going to be at the back so your first and your last stitch needs to make up enough space to sum up to the numbers the, the measurement you want to get between the holes so first I'm going to mark my three and now the space between the holes is six so now you just keep adding plus six centimeter I mean I always use centimeter I never use inches so if you keep going like that just keep marking your holes and please take note that the space from the edge to where I'm punching is one is about two centimeters that's one inch so you have one straight line of holes so I'm just going to keep adding plus six plus six three I'm just I just put the calculator here so you guys can see how we actually added up to 72 because it's 72 then the allowance is one centimeter on either side that's why we cut out 74 so you can either look at this one on the screen or you could look at the phone that I'm using to calculate it's the same thing they're not running at the same speed I couldn't match them up but I just this is just proof that this formula always works for me sometimes you get fractions but it doesn't matter you have to go down to the last millimeter to get to exactly what you want so now the remaining three centimeter is now going to add to the last the other side so it's going to make your first six centimeter so now this holes that i this spots that i marked out i'm going to punch all of them out and i have to be as uniform as possible i prefer to punch while my material is still wide open rather than finishing the bag and then punching this way it's easier to mark out your spots <clears throat> so now i've finished punching and i'm going to go ahead to close the bag so now I'm going to open it and now you see where I wanted it to be one piece. So then I fold it sideways and I just run it down from top to bottom. So I'm going to take it to the same machine and I'm going to sew it again. And now you just sort of flip it out. And because of the folding, we know where to go back to and because we already have our eyelids and holes punched, we know where to just open it and we use them sort of as a tracking um, method so we know exactly where we're coming back to <clears throat> okay so now we've seen everything is coming out fine and now it's to close the bottom of the bag so this is why i wanted the bias because i just wanted to do something quick and easy and simple so here i have um well we call it a bias binder I sort of attach it to my cylinder bed machine and I just sort of fed the bias through it and I'm just sewing it once while I'm closing the bag 
this way it's super easy but if you don't have this you can actually sew it once then sew your bias on it so when you flip it inside out you don't have the insides of the bag moving around that's why i wanted to join it to the base if not there are many ways to close this bag but this is the best i could think of and now we're just going to go on and close all the holes all the eyelet holes so because our shoka is woven you can't just leave it frayed like that so you have to make sure that your eyelets fit in really tightly to prevent this material from unraveling eventually so now i'm just going to sew the rope which is eight centimeter i just sort of folded it in it there's no specific measurement but this if you want it to be one centimeter two centimeter as long as it passes through the eyelets that's the main deal and it's neat so i'm just going to pass this through and that's why when you're punching eyelet holes you need to have an even number because when you pull the rope it's supposed to pull together and make folds and because i wanted six folds and a fold is two holes <laughs> it sounds funny but it's, it's serious like you want the folds to be neat so when you pull it together you sort of have this pattern so thank you so much for watching my video and um, if you want to try this you can go ahead and do this if you don't have um, an industrial sewing machine you can always use a domestic because these are just regular fabrics and full leather is really really soft so off camera i just made a one inch bag strap and um if you, if you can't make a strap you can always like get one already made as long as the color matches it's fine so thank you don't forget to like and subscribe and you can give me a shout out you can comment down below what you think about this video you can give me a thumbs up and i hope to see you guys in my next posts